Hi. Um, I, as I'm in the studio on my own, um, I have the camera set up, so I can't really see your comments, but um, I wanted to tell you about the uh, year-long class that I'm teaching in Dallas, which starts on the 10th of May. So it's a, a, a evening lecture on a Thursday and then a fr full Friday, Saturday, Sunday class. Um, send me an email and I'll send you the details or get in touch with Angie Van Gallis and she can send you the information. It's a really complex class on the Gothic script. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of writing here so that you can see some of the stuff that I'm going to deal with. Um, I just have the uh, list of tools and materials to get through so I can send them back to Angie. For those of you in Toronto or you know anybody in Toronto or in Canada or close to Toronto who are interested in taking a class on the 19th and 20th of May, so after I leave Dallas, I will go up to Toronto to see my sister and to eat, obviously, and to uh, teach a class on the Saturday and Sunday. I believe the uh, Toronto Calligraphers uh, Guild, they're, they're looking at having a, a talk on the Wednesday, which I think is the 15th. But you need to talk to them about that because spaces are limited. And then after Toronto, I go back to New York to go to the London, to the New York Stationery Show. So if anybody's there on the 22nd and want to have a coffee, please let me know. Um, and then I go to Calgary to teach. The Calgary class is a lecture on the Friday, then Saturday, Sunday, copper plate workshop, and uh, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, oh, I think I might have that wrong. Um, the, 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 yeah, and the, 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 yes, I think it's a Monday, Tuesday is a flourishing workshop, but you have to have completed the copper plate workshop in order to do the flourishing. You could do the copper plate in Toronto and then come to the flourishing workshop in Calgary. Anyway, the Dallas class. So the Dallas class is going to be based on the Gothic period. And so we're going to be looking at one, Textualis quadrata. So I've developed a little trick for those of you who do quadrata. For those of you who want a little bit of uh, pen skills, a uh, broad edge nib, this is a great class for you. So I'm going to look at really good introductory skills to uh, to broad edge nibs. The class will look at um, starting off with markers, then moving on to pens, and then we'll start looking with then we'll start writing with quills. And so it's a, it's a really, really wonderful class. It'll look a lot at historical techno, uh, technique uh, and historical tools and materials. We'll work a little bit with gold and gold leaf and some gilding and some, um, some uh, vellum eventually. So we have some textualis quadrata using a little trick I developed to help place the letters. And I'm going to write every letter in a different script. So we're looking at quadrata. We're looking at semi-quadrata. And we're looking at fractor. And then we're going to look at Batard. Oh. And of course, you know, with Batard, we're obviously going to look at that beautiful F, which has that really lovely bulge in the middle. And obviously with the fracture, we will have some Some new discoveries I've made on flourishing uh, for Fractor. Uh, so obviously we'll, you'll become a little bit more conversant with pointed brush lettering and some pointed nib work. Um, so, 
little bit of hard work there trying to do this on my own but um alice isn't here she's somewhere else uh so if you need any information email the studio at pscribe.com i've also set up the classes in the studio um of which there are tons um and i'm also running some um some private classes if you're interested in really sort of honing your skills uh I am teaching some modern calligraphy, but if you want to learn modern calligraphy, some of the prerequisites mean that you have to study some copper plates, so at least you get a better sense of how the letters work. All right, I will do a, a post in a, a week or so to discuss the manual because Speedball has it. They have an editor looking at it, and not, not that there's space to add anything else, so you know, all, all of it's already there. Um, and um, and it's, it, it's quite exciting. Uh, let me grab it for you so that you can have a quick look at it. All right, let's turn this and let's bring this down. So this is a copy of the manual. So these, this is the last copy. So we're just, uh, we're just going through this right now. Um, I'll hold it, I'll hold it a little lower down so that you can see. Um, you can see the whole thing. There you go. So I talk about the character of the script, how energy and geometry work within the context of the script, um, why when you think you are doing English round hand from Bickham you are struggling with it, different names of the script, um, different tools. I have a little section here on interactions, which papers work best with which nibs and with which inks. Um, I've also given you metric measurements versus imperial measurements parts of the of the tool so that you know what you're talking about uh, I go through posture why, why a straight holder is different from a beak holder and how they affect the uh, the structure of the the script um, Sorry, I'm teaching a class this evening and student is doing really well using this material uh, I look at different handholds where the page should be on the page whole arm movement different kinds of holes uh, then I look at exercises and why they work the way they work. Uh, I look at uh, how the manual is constructed, my fourfold symmetry, which I've spoken to so many of you about. Um, then I have some really beautiful letters from Tom, Tom Kemp, which is amazing. And I've done a whole page on the anatomy of the minuscules and why the line of universal beauty and the connective stroke works the way they work why they work the way they work, and what is a compound curve. This is not a compound curve. This is what the letters look like. Um, so it's, it's quite a lot of information. I had Nick Pang, um, Entropy Inc, sent me a message to say, um, so Nick's one of, the, one of my, my very good friends, and he's, he's, he's sort of looking through the manual so that when you guys get it, you don't sort of uh, fall off your chair. Um, and he said, Wow, I'm, I'm, this, this, this is not really a beginner's manual. And then he said it's actually a really good beginner's manual because it really covers things that you, you just never see. You just need to take your time with the manual, read through the stuff. I know when most of us get books, we, we never read any of it. We just jump into the writing. Um, and let's go to... So I look at why the letters vary in width. Um, and how different flourishes work for different kinds of letters. Um, I'm just looking at this again, how to apply pressure for a nib, uh, different exercises for pointed flexible nib, um, the three major aspects of the script. Uh, so historically, these were called direct and indirect strokes. Then I've done an anatomy for the minuscules. And then of course, the minuscules sort of match the majuscules in their complexity and there's all this information on what to look out for and little bits of information on there and the parts of the minuscules and how they work as a letter and the confinement with the ductus that's enlarged so you could see the parts and I've also expanded the letter so you can see what each letter, I'll just bring this up for you, 
you could see what each letter looks like. Obviously, when you write, this overlaps as you as is here. But by expanding it, you can see you go up and remember this little thing that I developed, this that I came up with called the kink is in the ink. So it goes up, it kinks, it goes back down, and it's usually covered by the ink. But I've spread it open so you could see it better. Um, what else? And you have lead-in strokes, you have variations to the letters, you have words being written out so you could see what the connections look like, what the ligatures are like. Um, and then we have this page. So this is a page of practice words. So these are words that I've come up with over the sort of, you know, millions of years of doing calligraphy. Um, and these words are words that I would write down when I'm writing an envelope or something. And I, I find that, you know, you, you're sort of dealing with a client and they have a really difficult name. So some of the difficult names are here. Uh, so there's a, so like Emma, Emma is a really difficult name to write um, because the E is big. The M is big, the M is big. And so if you're writing M on a place card, you should always think, I need to write to the left, start to the left. Um, and then I've done the gods of writing, which I'm really happy about, and pharaohs and Assyrian kings and animals. And I, I, wanted, I wanted this to, to work in a way that you would... Um, I'm really glad you like that, Nick. I'm really, really glad you like that. Um, I wanted you to look at how I, to understand how I think. So, you know, I, I, I worked in a pyramid for six weeks drawing hieroglyphs for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And I learned to translate Middle Kingdom Egyptian. So the Egyptian pharaohs are really, they're really important to me. Um, of course, gods of writing all over the world. You know, there are lots of us writing all over the world. You know, I use crystals for healing because I trained as a Reiki master and it helps me with my hands. Um, and then I've done... The ordinal indicators. So we have we have uh, the punctuation. We have ranging, non-ranging, how to write the numbers, historical numbers, punctuation, diacritical marks, and I put in the ordinal indicators for you. So those of you who say, well, what is that thing when it's first or second? These are called ordinal indicators or ordinal abbreviations or revealed terminals. Uh, they're a little bit small, and I've also done some Roman caps through there. Um, Roman numerals. Uh, what else? Let's see, I've developed two new grids, which I'm going to rush through quickly because I don't want you to see that because I'm going to show that on the website. I've developed a new spiral to help you with your work. We have a little section on flourishing, um, which helps you to understand how a flourish is constructed. Um, and then I've done, I'll need to bring this up to you. So these are ligatures so there's ampersands right across the top then there are uh, double letters and how they ligature each other and i've done some misters and sirs and doctor and honorable um so there's 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 a ton in here for you guys to work with uh uh yeah <laughs> thank you so much nick and then i've I've developed a new brush hold, which I've been teaching, and this new brush hold helps you to change your pen hold, and it gives you a much lighter hold, it gives you much more variability of line, flexibility, so I go through the brush hold here, I will do a video on that, um, and I've done some copper plate brush letters, because those of you who do envelopes for, uh, who do weddings and events, you know, if you have a, a table number to write, the biggest problem is you have to draw the thing and outline it and fill it. Hey, Nick, how are you doing? Um, and you have to fill it, and it's, it, it's a real problem. Um, and th that, that's a real issue because you're wasting a lot of time drawing and outlining and filling when all you really need to do is write bigger. Um, so learning how a brush works at different sizes is great, and then I've just done some very basic flourishing for you. Uh, I would have loved to have put in pages and pages of this, but it gives you a sense of what you can do with one line. So this one central column makes all of these shapes with the same tool. Uh, and obviously, I've been really lucky to be blessed by such wonderful friends. And I've asked some great people from all over the world to contribute. And they've all written the same line of text, the Sphinx of Black Quartz, Judge My Vows, which 
Um, and so you can see all their comparative, all their comparative works in here. Um, of course, when you get the book, you'll sort of see uh, who everybody is. Uh, and funnily enough, we, we sent out 24 of these. We only had 24 spaces. Um, and we've put a font in as well as, you know, Max is an astonishing font designer in Argentina. Um, and Angie said to me, oh, uh, we don't have any space for you to do one. <laughs> so my work isn't in here. Um, and then we've, you know, we've done a really good glossary of terms. Um, and then I've done a little thank you to say thank you. Thank you all for all your help. Um, I do have some work in the manual, well, on the manual. So this is, this is roughly what the cover looks like. Uh, so we have Telmut to thank for this. Um, and I, on the cover, you can see things like 137.5 and 55. We're using, um, we're using sacred geometry here. And that's the back. So this is not the actual paper. Uh, and so I've written something about the line of universal beauty and what, what, what where Hogarth came up with this line from. Um, so I hope, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight. I need a little bit of time to talk to the distributors, um, to distributors in the UK and to distributors uh, in Europe. Uh, don't worry, we're looking at distributors in, in Asia as well. Uh, we're trying to get this manual out to everybody. And... Um, and I am so, so tired. Um, I'm setting up a pre-order page on my site, uh, paulantoniascribe.com. So I'm going to set up a pre-order page there. And something I haven't really been able to talk to you about, um, I've been working on a kit. So I found the perfect paper, the perfect ink, and the perfect nibs to work together so that the kit, you know, sometimes you buy paper and you think it'll work and it just doesn't work and it drives you crazy because it just pisses you off. Um, it's a real, real problem. So you can have tools and materials that work together, tools and materials that I have tested, um, tools and materials that I know work together, um, and, um, and, and they work well with the, the manual as well as the, as, as well as the kit together. They work, they work really well together. Um, we will put some new guidelines on the website. The new guidelines are amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you how wonderful they are. The new guidelines will give you such insight into why the letters work the way they look and how this came along and how the letters are the same way. So I know some of you look at me do a D and you think, I don't really like that narrow D. As soon as you see these new guidelines, you'll understand why the letters are the widths they are. Um, what else? Uh, so we're working on these guidelines and once they're out we'll post them on the on the on the on the on the website and um, i am sorting out the the pre-order pages um you can either wait for me to do it or you could go to john neil john john's already set up a pre-order page and we're waiting for one other person to set up in uh, in the uk who will deal with the distribution for europe i'm sorry i am waffling on and i really need to go don't forget to email angie about the dallas classes it's a year-long class um, once the classes are filled up, they're filled up. We do have a little bit of leeway with the year long class here. Um, you can take the first class on its own, uh, which is Textualis. Um, we're already, um, uh, email Angie and she'll, she'll let you know. Um, but we do have a refresher course just before we start the, um, before we start the Fractal class, which is in August, just after Iampeth. So those of you coming to Iampeth, come back with me to Dallas and do the class with me. It'll be really, really great. Okay, I've talked enough and I need to go. Really have a nice day and, and, and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all so much for your love and your support and your patience and your uh, laughing at my craziness. Um, and I, 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 I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for really wanting this manual and for, for being so... Um, I'm going to go because I'm going to cry. Okay, bye. bye. Thank you. Thank you.